Hi, my name is Dr. Patel. I'm director of head and neck surgery here at Mercy Hospital. I wanted to take a little uh, opportunity to talk about tracheostomy care in patients, whether they're critical care patients in the ICU or on the floor. Trach care is very important. These patients are um, prone to having airway issues, where uh, which is the reason they have the tracheostomy in the first place. And so we need to make sure these trachs remain clean in the proper position in order to avoid any complications that could arise. Recall that airway problems are something that are life-threatening and you have very little time to react sometimes. So this is something that is very important to know, you know, as a routine, uh, just as routine it is to give a patient pain medication or help a patient go to the restroom or put an IV because the airway is something that, you know, we need to maintain in order to, uh, to keep a patient alive. So this is a tracheostomy. Um, this is, you know, a patient that I would have, let's say the, the tracheostomy is sutured in place. There's a few things that um, you'll notice these patients will have a lot of secretions. Patients who have had head and neck surgery in particular and airway surgery are more prone to having secretions than say a patient who has had a, neuro, a neurological injury or a septic patient simply because we've operated on the airway and so the mucosa has been irritated, has been cut and so it's going to secrete a lot of mucus, uh, which is a normal protective mechanism. And so all of these patients, in particular the ones with head and neck surgery, will have excessive amount of secretions. Now it is our job to determine uh, when those secretions are excessive from the patient's condition versus are the secretions coming from the tracheostomy itself. Because sometimes the tracheostomy itself will stimulate secretion production. Similar to if you have a JP drain in place, the JP drain is continually putting out, you have to make a decision at some point, is the JP drain actually stimulating some of these secretions and so will removing the JP actually decrease the secretions. That's a judgment call and that's something you need to determine uh, based on the patient's condition. In terms of managing these secretions, there's a few different things. You'll notice that these secretions will come out one of two places, either through the tracheostomy tube itself, sometimes it'll leak around the edges, and there will be uh, secretions in the oropharynx. Recall that when you have a tracheostomy in place, when you have the oral cavity, the oropharynx, the hypopharynx, which is below the oropharynx, and you have the larynx, which is the vocal cord area, and then the tracheostomy is below there. So recall that when you are creating a closed system with a tracheostomy, the entire hypopharynx, oropharynx, and oral cavity, the patient is not breathing through there anymore. The patient's airflow is going through the tracheostomy into the lungs and out of the lungs through the tracheostomy. So so secretions can and will build up up top. And so it is important to perform deep suction with a Yankauer uh, suction. So when you are suctioning in the oral cavity, you don't want to just suction kind of superficially. You want to get back there without injuring anything, but all the way back as deep as you can go past the curve here in order to get down into the airway to really get those secretions. Why is that important? Because if you have, for example, a cuffed trach and you have a buildup of secretions in the oropharynx and you are switching to an uncuffed trach, taking them off the ventilator, what have you, once you pull the air out of the cuff and you deflate it, all that mucus that's up top that's sitting above the cuff is going to drop into the lungs. And so it's very important to suction before you do all of that. Similar to when you suction a patient before you extubate them. Similar idea. When you're suctioning a patient, there's a couple of ways with a tracheostomy, a couple of ways to do it. Here, you're all familiar with this um, soft suction that's attached to the circuit. And so you put that in there, uh, suction, suction, and then you draw it out. The other option you have is to use either a soft suction or if you have enough room, any other Yankauer. Uh, if the opening is big enough and you can suction around it, don't be afraid to get in there to really suction out any um, peripheral drainage. And then the other way to do it, if you can't get all of the secretions out and you notice that there may be, the patient's having a lot of secretions, there could be a possibility that the cannula needs to be clean. And so what you do is you take the circuit off if there is a circuit in place. Generally, there are two types of trachs. There are trachs that are single tube and trachs that have an inner cannula. Most people will use the inner cannula one because it's removable. As opposed to a single tube, you have to remove the entire trach and clean it and put it back, which most people don't like to do. So the inner cannula comes out pretty easily here. Couple options when you take it out. If you notice it's just lightly soiled, you might just rinse it out. If you notice that it's heavily soiled, plugged, what have you, don't try and clean at that point, just take a new one, you know, whatever the protocol may be, and then put it back. All you gotta do is just place it there and you'll feel a little click. And that's it. So that's, that's how you manage tracheostomy secretions in general. And like I said, sometimes uh, it is very important to determine whether the tracheostomy is at some point stimulating some of these secretions. One other important point is trach positioning. Because uh, when you have a circuit that's attached to the tracheostomy, uh, because of the weight of the circuit, sometimes if you've noticed, the tracheostomy sits like this. 
Now, why is that a bad thing? A uh, couple of things. So think of the anatomy of a trach here. So the trach is like this, right? You've got the trachea here, and you've got the esophagus behind. And so if the tracheostomy, if this is the trach, and the tracheostomy is leaning forward like this because of the weight of the circuit, the tip of that tracheostomy, the tip of that tracheostomy is sitting and irritating the back wall of the trachea, which can cause several problems. One, increased secretions. As it's sitting there, it's irritating the mucosa, causing secretions to come out, and then we think there's a lot of secretions. Secondly, it can irritate the mucosa to the point where you get granulation tissue and a granuloma forming on the back wall, which can plug the trach, as well as cause bleeding in the trach. The third thing is that in the worst case scenario, this perforates through the esophagus, or the posterior tracheal wall into the esophagus, and creates a tracheoesophageal fistula, which is potentially a life-threatening condition. And so trach positioning, all that has to be done is support in, from the front, and that puts the trach in, in the correct position. All of this is important uh, in order to prevent complications um, for these patients uh, in the future. And one of the ways that you can, uh, well, there's several ways to reposition the, the tracheostomy. We have those um, ventilator circuit support arms that you can always use. I find it very helpful to potentially take, um, you open a, a, a pack of gauze, and then you can put this whole thing to support the patient. You can always secure it. There's many ways to do that where you want to maintain that nice 90 degree uh, angle as opposed to the tracheostomy being pulled down like this. Additionally, what this does is it pulls on the skin, causes some of the sutures to tear through the skin, causing ulcers. Uh, again, instability of the trach. It just it becomes a snowball effect. So proper trach care from the beginning, proper trach positioning from the beginning will decrease any complication of tracheostomy significantly.